Good morning. Um, I'm Harris Cohen. This is going to be a podcast which we will discuss with the authors, uh, Drs. Ribeiro and Werner, uh, their article written with others that will appear in radiographics uh, in the special pediatric section. Their article is entitled Central Nervous System Effects of Intrauterine Zika Virus Infection. A Manual of Perinatal Imaging Findings. Um, thanks for appearing on this podcast, Drs. Rubiero and Werner. Um, I'll begin with uh, some questions just to help the podcast audience understand something about this uh, key paper in uh, this future radiographics. Um, can you describe the current state of the Zika infection problem in your country of Brazil? We know that uh, the current epidemic of uh, Zika virus infection here in South America and Central America are, uh, is a serious global public health emergency. Uh, presently, Zika virus is found in approximately 59 countries. So uh, 33 of which uh, on the American continent. In Brazil, especially in the north, northeast and southeast, the Zika virus outbreak is cause uh, of concern for pregnant women because the intrauterine infection has been found to be associated with multiple brain malformations. So uh, here in Brazil, the number of newborns with confirmed microcephaly uh, per year during the outbreak was about 20 times greater than the previously reported. Uh, we know that at the end of 2014, Brazil hosted several international events, uh, such as Canoe Championship, uh, World Youth Meeting, and Soccer World Cup. Uh, so uh, with participation of uh, people from all around the world. Uh, so it includes uh, countries uh, from Pacific, uh, in which Zika virus was endemic, like French Polynesia, New Caledonia, the Cook Islands, and Easter Island. So uh, an in interesting fact is that Haiti's uh, soccer selection may have brought the virus to our country during the Confederations Cup. They played in Recife, capital of Pernambuco State. So uh, in October of 2000, 2015, uh, the state of Pernambuco uh, was subje subjected to an increase in the number of newborns with microcephaly. And this coincided with uh, an epidemic peak of Zika virus infection during the first tr uh, trimester of pregnancy. Uh, so at the end of 2015, Zika virus has been associated with several fetal and, and central nervous system malformations in newborns. Uh, then in February uh, 2016, who declared emergency in international public health for Zika virus. Uh, so, uh, there was a high number of cases reported in, in the summer, a real epidemic. However, that drastically reduced the number of cases in our winter, uh, which is dry. So, that's why we had low virus transmission this time. Uh, the big surprise was the low virus circulation in the summer of 2017. Uh, and since then, the number has been has been very low. So the explanation would be a high viremia, a high viremia that uh, has probably humanized the humanized the population, and also this summer uh, was drier than uh, than usual. So that's why. Right. I had heard that drier uh, springs lead to lesser mosquitoes lead to lesser mosquito-borne infection. At least they told me that once when I uh, visited Alaska. So Alaska has a lot of mosquitoes in the, uh, in the summer unless you have a dry Alaskan uh, spring. But that's neither here nor there. So WHO, World Health Organization, sees it as a worldwide concern. 
Um, have there been any preventative actions other than luck by uh, nature that there was a dry spring? Yeah, we know that the, uh, the, the virus transmitted by the mosquitoes, that is the Egypti, which is the vector here in Brazil also for dengue. And it has been dengue since uh, the 90s. So uh, one of the most important prevention is uh, it's to fight against the mosquito. So uh, try to avoid the... Uh, Try to uh, to reduce the 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 water standing water and trying to reduce the population of the the mosquito. The second point is we have to try to try to avoid the the mosquito bites. So using repellents, uh, long sleeved clothes, closed shoes, and especially in ambience with air conditioning. But there are also some recommendations here to the pregnant women to try to avoid the areas with the virus circulates. Então, so in that time last year, we say the people try to avoid the northeast of part of Brazil and the southeast part of Brazil, especially in these places, in those places who have uh, a, a very high circulate, uh, circulation of uh, uh, the virus. We have also here a very interesting point uh, is a research in Fiocruz. Uh, Fiocruz is a center of research, a governmental center of research in Brazil, and they are trying to modify the mosquitoes genetically. It's very in, in, now they, they are doing the research in the favelas uh, of Rio de Janeiro, they try to uh, uh, modify the female mosquitoes. So the female mosquitoes will have, will have a, a lower time of life, and the, so they won't leave enough to reproduce. And they are getting some very interesting results in some parts uh, 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 of the Rio de Janeiro. They are working also in, uh, about the vaccines. We still not have the vaccine here to, to be used, but they are still doing the research about the vaccines using light and uh, attenuated virus. Uh, very interesting. Um, so getting to the point about the imaging findings and your paper, uh, what are the key clinical or imaging findings that can alert the imager to a potential problem with Zika infection in a given pregnancy? So when, when you're evaluating, what, what suggests that there's a problem? Well, uh, first, the clinical signs of Zika virus infection are fever, skin maculopapular rash, arthralgia, and not virulent conjunctivitis. But it's very important to note that 80% of cases are asymptomatic. So uh, considering that, the infection is self-limiting uh, and asymptomatic in most of the cases. Uh, the congenital infection is usually diagnosed at the time of routine prenatal scan, especially in the third tri trimester. Uh, actually, we have seen several times mothers who had no symptom uh, when the fetal abnormalities are detected on ultrasound. Uh, so the main imaging findings in prenatal are microcephaly, ventriculomegaly, and brain, uh, brain calcifications. Uh, we can find also fetal growth abnormalities, eye deformities, and uh, uh, maybe associated uh, arthrogrypoces. Uh, we had uh, an increased incidence, incidence uh, of neurological syndromes, uh, mainly in adult patients, uh, including encephalitis, acute flaccid paralysis, paralysis and Guillain-Barré syndrome. Uh, unfortunately, in other cases, the disease is detected after childbirth by neuroimaging CT or MR. 
So uh, predominantly, we're making some of these as third trimester because the individual is being evaluated for the first time in third trimester, or these individuals who were seen in second trimester, the 18 to 21 week time period that people really most often look at anatomy, but then there's a lag in growth during that uh, pregnancy, and then they're given a second ultrasound. Did you yeah, follow? The, yeah. Most, most of the diagnosis, the imaging diagnosis was in the third trimester. The problem is that uh, the first ultrasound scans, uh, first and second trimester, you could not see anything. All the cases... Most of the cases we saw was after 29 weeks. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 we have to highlight that 80% uh, of the patients didn't have any kind of symptoms. So the women came to the ultra routine ultrasound screening, and then we start to see something what was wrong in the head of the baby, microcephaly, calcifications, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. In most of those cases, we could see after 29 weeks. Yeah. In routine scan. Routine scan. Yeah, no, I could see that cortical abnormalities, which are sometimes difficult to pick up in fetal life, would be more easily picked up at 30 weeks and beyond, as opposed to the brain, which essentially looks like lysencephaly in the yeah. 18 to 25, 26 week yeah. time period, even though they may be normal. So that's a confusing time, difficult for me in my work to sometimes see cortical abnormality at that time period. Um, great. So a more difficult issue. What are the parents being told regarding the findings and the child's potential. Yeah, in Brazil, we cannot talk. the 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 law uh, is forbidding the abortion. We can talk. Cannot talk about abortion. We mm -hmm. when when you see any problem, some problems. So what you say in, in that time is when you have some uh, a little alterations in the ultrasound, like. Uh, microcephaly, calcifications. We talk with the, about the disease, the possibility, because we start to have the PCR here to do the confirmation of the case, PCR in the blood and also in the urine. And as we confirm the case uh, or with the serology also, we talk about the future of the baby. So we have specialized centers for handicapped babies, and they open some uh, sessions for the babies uh, with Zika diagnosis. So we confirm the diagnosis, and then they are uh, uh, they go direct those that centers to be cared uh, uh, after the labor. Yeah. So and what happened? The, the women come to a routine ultrasound. For example, the, the most of the time, third trimester. We, see, we saw microcephaly, the, the main points in ultrasound, my, microcephaly, uh, brain uh, ventricular dilatation, and, uh, and calcifications. Sometimes it was very hard to well uh, do the examination of the baby because they, this is a, a, a 3D printing of the, you know, of the head of the baby. And we sometimes have a lot of problems to scan because the bones are very close. So in those cases, we used also MRI, fetal MRI, to see also the images uh, of the brain, the brain surface. So as soon as we see all the modifications of the head we, uh, we saw in the prenatal, we call the obstetrician and we, the government opened some centers to care of this, this family after the labor. Thanks. Um, so what would be the teaching points that you would like to make via your article. What are the if 
if I or other people listening to the podcast were the audience, what would you say would be the three major points you would like made? Uh, well, uh, yeah, the main point I think is very important is that uh, most of the case, the routine ultrasound in prenatal, it will be the, the, first, uh, uh, the first view of the disease. So the, 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 the main technology of imaging to, to, to do the diagnosis or to look for the diagnosis is a routine ultrasound in the pregnancy. And ultrasound is very uh, help, helpful also after the pregnancy when the baby is born. And, all, and you can see, tell you also that MRI could help us in prenatal and also in postnatal. Uh, this, the, the second point, a very important point, is the, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the beginning, in, in prenatal, microcephaly, is very uh, is something that you found find, you could find, and ventricular dilatation and uh, calcifications, and confirmed also by MRI, which show us uh, uh, the lesions cephaly very very well, and you can tell more. Yeah, uh, uh, talking about uh, postnatal images, we have the CT images. Uh, and the MRI, and they can also unveil additional findings with regard to involvement of the CNS. So, including uh, the occurrence of microcephaly with malformation of, uh, for example, uh, malformation of cortical de development and the multifocal dystrophic calcifications in the cortex and mainly on the subcortical white matter. Uh, along with associated uh, cortical atrophy. Uh, talking about school deformities, uh, CT is better for the evaluation, but MRI can also be used. Uh, these abnormalities of school uh, seem to be secondary to a loss of brain parenchymal volume caused by extensive brain damage by the virus, uh, which results in a collapse of the frontal and parietal bones. So uh, it's rendering a, a flattened appearance associated with scalp protrusion and redundant skin in the occipital region, which seems to be maybe a phenotypic finding in the physical examination of these newborns. I think Zika is a big field. There are many things we don't know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, maybe we are the tip of the iceberg. Many things we must study and know better the disease. For example, here in Brazil, in this year, uh, 2017, we, we didn't have any case, any notification of uh, pregnant women with Zika. So no cases in this year. Maybe a dry summer, we don't know. But as we have uh, the experience with the uh, uh, dengue, yeah. dengue, we could see sometimes high levels and low levels depends on the year. We mm -hmm. don't know if Zika in the next year will come strong or not. So, we are studying now the women positive for Zika last year in 2015 and 2016. So, we could find our new research now, we could find a 1,624 women PCR positive in blood or Urine. From all of this popula those, this population, we had 21 babies born with any mal some malformation, especially microcephaly. So, uh, 
1,624 and 21 babies born with some problems. Mm -hmm. But the, pro the new of this research is how are the babies who born well without any kind, any problem of imaging problem? And you can see now that 30%, around 30% of these babies have, start to have speech delay and in few cases, cognitive delay also. Have you seen abnormality predominantly in the supertentorial brain as opposed to the subtentorial brain? Yes, we had some case abnormality in posterior fossa, we could see. And uh, uh, also we could see some, in one case, uh, eye problem, orbital mm -hmm. problems, and one case of arthrogryposis. We have one case. And but I think uh, the most area affected is uh, the supratentorial area. Yes. 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 Yeah. That's why we see this uh, pattern of the, the, the head because the, the occipital protuberance and the redundant skin uh, on the occipital area is seen just because of it, because the posterior fossa is preserved in all of the most yeah. of the cases. Yes, uh, supratentorial was more significant for Zika than the fossa posterior and the other things. We could see some cases, but we saw more uh, lysencephaly, uh, uh, polymicrogyria, many calcifications, and, uh, and bra uh, ventricular dilatation. And you're seeing those usually above the tentorium? Yes. yes. Great. Um, that white skull that you showed, the 3D, yes. that's the right. individual. Because yes. This is, this is a 10-day uh, baby. Yeah, this is a 10-day baby. With uh, when I got the information from the CT and I did the 3D printing of the brain. Mm -hmm. And this head was three less than three standard deviation for mm -hmm. the, the age of the baby. Very, very small. So it's greater than three a standard deviation, smaller than expected. Even though it yeah. looks like it's a pretty good yeah. ratio yeah. between very small. And, and you can see also the fontanel because it's white, it's but so it's much small. Very, very, very small. And yeah. the sutures are overlapped. Mm -hmm. The sutures are overlapped. Right. Okay. So that was all great information. We could go on forever, but we're not. Um, so do you have any final points or comments? And you don't have to have them, but yeah, uh, yeah. We are start, uh, It's a it's a disease that uh, uh, is a challenge for us because uh, we had many many formations. It's something that we didn't know because I remember in, two, in the first trimester, the first semester of 2015. My colleagues from northeast part of Brazil calling me and say and telling me, oh, my, my incidence of microcephaly start to grow up. And as soon as they called me, two weeks later, I, could, I saw two cases in one day here in Rio. I say, some things were wrong. Sometimes you see microcephaly two, three times a year. Mm -hmm. And now I, I start to have a week. So uh, and so we could learn another disease that we didn't know, and we had a lot of information uh, during the year 2016 and 2017. But I think we are still in the tip of the iceberg, and we need to study much, much more uh, uh, about the disease. And I think we have a lot of information about the babies who born well, the babies who didn't have any sign, any sign of the disease, but now are showing us that some kind of problem is coming up. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to learn more. Right, about which is with most things. You have to learn more. Yeah. And uh, at least you guys are at the forefront and Brazil is at the forefront of finding this information out that will help the world. Yes. So I would like to thank the authors for this helpful article and the important issue in their current comments. Uh, this is, again, most helpful for the readers of Radio Graphics and international education on uh, an important topic in prenatal CNS imaging, and as discussed by the authors, an important issue as these kids grow along the way, particularly those who appear unaffected by the virus. So I thank you.